one three Venn diagrams. The first activity in your lesson book is a group activity, which we can't do when you're uh, by yourself. So we're going to go ahead and skip that part. Here's a picture of a Venn diagram. You've probably seen this kind of situation before. And you can go ahead and take a look at uh, um, what this represents. And they're only letters, so it's hard to imagine what that is. So I want you to uh, uh, take, a, um, take a few minutes to Google Venn diagrams and then come back to the video. Okay, now you've come back from uh, kind of Googling Venn diagram. Here's a picture of what I'm looking at and a good example here. Here is a banana and a lemon. And you can see if this is, represents the banana and the lemon, you can see that uh, they have something in common. They're both fruit and yellow, but they have differences that belong only to the banana and only to the lemon. So you can see the sour and bumpy would be for the lemon, smooth and sweet for the banana, but they're both yellow fruit. That's the what we call the, uh, we're going to call that the intersection. That's a good example of that. I think this video actually has another good example with um, with a cow and a horse. So what do they have? There we go. We're taking a look for, look at the different. And so if you made one with a cow and a horse, you could take a look and see um, right here. You can see the next piece would be the, in the middle be what traits do they have in common. So cow has horns, it says moo, uh, a horse is whiny and fast. Those are only to the horse and the cow, but they have some traits in common, which are their mammals and four legs. So that would be represented by a picture like that right there. So you can take a look at that. Let's go on with the lesson here. Continuing on here, um, here's a situation without the pictures right now. Um, you have the situation of um, these two uh, who are going to dinner and they're trying to figure out which restaurant. So you can see uh, there's certain uh, foods that Caden likes, certain foods that Helen likes here. And then what types of foods do they both like? Can you go ahead and you would um, you can identify those. We call that in mathematics the intersection. The, the things that they have in common is the intersection. If the restaurants include all the foods on both the lists, there's your full list. That would be the union. You're putting together both their lists. So we're going to use that terminology in something called sets or set theory. And so a set is just a um, collection of objects, as you can see right there. Um, I'll highlight that right here. A set is a collection of objects. Each object is called a member or element of a set. And so we use certain terminology. Where we said we use the word intersection and union. And so you can see here, we also have, instead of using the word intersection union in mathematics, we use a symbol. So here's a symbol for the intersection. And it's a kind of an upside down U. And then we have a symbol for the union, which is a U. And you go ahead and take a minute to read uh, those definitions of that. And again, you can see in a picture what is represented here. The intersection is this piece here. Um, you can see the intersection is in this area here. The union is putting together both sets all together. And you can see the notation that we have there for intersection and union. Let's go ahead and apply that. Again, take your time to read that. Um, and you can also get that some in the prep or in your homework. You can look at some videos there too. But here are some sets. Let's look at them numbers. And so here are the questions. So when you see this kind of interesting notation right here, A union B, A, sorry, A intersection B, A union, right? And so keep that in mind, what we're dealing with there. Um, here, right, this is the intersection. And then the other one is the union. So looking at this again, looking at that notation, this is called the intersection. And so we can go ahead and look at that there. And then this, sorry for my writing here. And this one here is called the union. And so you can see what we have here is you see the um, intersection of A and B means what do they have in common? I look at A and B and you can see they have two and five in common. The union of A and C here is just join them together and so you can go ahead and list all the objects that are in both A and C and so that's the the A or C and so you list that 
uh, do the complete list there. Um, notice that you have a three and a three. That means, again, they're common elements. And so you just write it once. You don't have to write it twice. And then you go ahead and take a look at your answers for intersections of C and B. Again, what they have in common, C, union D, that full list there. And so then we can answer some questions looking at this here. The picture, again, is here it's harder to see. The picture is easier to see, and that's the power of the Venn diagram is looking at that there. And so using this to answer the questions here, A, intersection B, you see four, nine are in common. A, union B, again, will be the full list of, of items there. And then answering questions or around these sets is an important skill here. Using this Venn diagram, answer the following. How many people participate in the survey? And so in this, you just go ahead and you're going to count up the total amount. And you can see there's 41 people when asked a certain question, whether you have dogs or cats, or what pet do you have? You can see the result. 41 people were asked. What does the five mean? Five people like dogs and cats. 11 like cats only or have cats. 18 have dogs only. Seven don't have cats or dogs. They have some other animal. And then we can go ahead and answer the rest of those questions there, taking a look. How many people own a cat but do not own a dog? And you can see um, how many people own a cat but not a dog. Look at my math there. I see 16 minus 5 is 11. That 11 comes from this area right here that I'm highlighting and circling here. Because 16 people like cats. But... Um, do not own a dog and so notice those five people own cats and dogs so I needed to subtract that to get 11. How many people own neither cats or dogs? Take a look at the answer there. Look at the math there. And then how many people own dogs? Notice that one 18 plus 5. You have that there and you can see the math. Okay so take a little time to think about that and look at that and then see if you can answer the next questions there. There's the answers to those questions. And again, looking at the keywords only, right? And that's where the 10 comes from. Drink coffee, that's 30 because you're putting the 20 and 30 together. This 20, they drink tea also, but they also drink coffee. So they have to be included in that count of people. And how many people were surveyed again? You see the total amount there. Okay, that's it for uh, this section. The next piece is the discussion. So you'll have to do that on your own. I'll post solutions later.